Hey guys, Chris here with The Good Old Gamer. So today we're gonna take a look at CPUs. Okay, so a lot of you guys out there are pretty curious about, and I'm not gonna lie, I am as well, the difference between a four core, eight thread CPU and a six core, six thread CPU. Now obviously this is coming to fruition because of the new Core i5 series. The Coffee Lakes CPUs will be six cores, six threads. And we're all kind of curious do the extra threads make a bigger difference or do the extra two physical cores actually make a difference? So luckily I have a Ryzen 7 1700 which has eight cores and 16 threads and I can change that up however I need to. Now obviously due to the fact that Intel's architecture is going to be different, this isn't going to be an exact one-to-one, -one, but it is a way to see how games kind of handle a different core count. Now I went ahead and knocked it all the way down to four cores, four threads, up through six cores and 12 threads. And as you can see in the gaming benchmarks, once we get there, uh, going to eight cores and eight threads and eight cores, 16 threads, that might be something worth testing. Uh, I wanna get you guys feedback on that. If that's something you'd be interested in seeing, I can do a follow-up video to this. So just let me know in the uh, comment section below on that one. So before we get to benchmarks, let me go ahead and let you guys know how I did the testing here. I used my standard test bench. You can check the information down below but I don't have a super powerful GPU. I have a 1060 or a GTX 970, both of which are about equal when overclocked. So to go ahead and mitigate GPU overhead, I went ahead and ran all tests at 720p, and I ran everything at ultra settings, which means the draw calls will be about as high as possible. Just lowering the resolution lowers GPU overhead, so this way the CPU is the forefront of the benchmark basically that's going to be the bottleneck and in all honesty while keeping an eye on Riva tuner statistics uh, it's very evident that the at 720p a GTX 1060 is completely CPU bottleneck so let's go ahead and check out those benchmarks Alrighty guys, so this is the 10 game test average. So if we can see here, we have a pretty big jump going from four cores and four threads to four cores and eight threads. Six cores and six threads to six cores and 12 threads, they're pretty much identical. They tied across the board. Now in some games, the six core six thread was actually superior because the games just simply didn't need the extra threads. And in other games, the extra threads did come in handy. But at the end of the day, they pretty much balanced out. So you can see the major difference is going from four cores, four threads, up to an eight thread CPU. Now, when we go from an eight thread CPU to a six thread CPU, so kind of taking a step backwards, but going to two physical actual cores does see a net increase in performance. Now we're not seeing major gains here. We're seeing a four and a half percent increase in average frame rate and about an 8% increase on the minimum frame rate. So minimums do see a reasonable bump up, but in all honesty, average frame rate isn't that much higher. Looking at four core, four thread going to four core, eight threads, however, we get about a 12 to 12.5% increase on the average frame rate, 
and we see a whopping 18.5% on the minimum frame rate. So clearly the largest upgrade on your CPU as far as cores go is going from four cores, four threads to four cores, eight threads. Moving up any higher than that is beneficial, but not really that big of a deal. So I went ahead and ran all my benchmarks with a plethora of background tasks going on. We had Google Chrome, I was downloading something, I had OBS open, it wasn't doing anything, just the camera was kind of looking at me. Um, what else did we have? We had RevaTuner and MSI Afterburner. We had Steam, Origin, good old games Galaxy, so GOG Galaxy was open. So for most people, that's probably even more than most people are gonna have open. Besides, oh yeah, a few notepads and some word processing. So that's, that's a pretty good indication of a standard user having standard stuff running in their background. Now, it's clear to see that there is an increase going from eight threads up to a six core, six thread CPU. However, it's not that massive of a jump. So what this really means to me is on the Intel side, the 7700K at four cores, eight threads running at five gigahertz. And let's say the new 8700K can only get up to 4.6, 4.7 gigahertz, which seems likely because it's on the same 14 nanometer process. I know it's refined, but it's still 14 nanometers. And honestly, they're not really gonna be able to push, or they shouldn't be able to push as high a clocks without some sort of really exotic cooling, which let's be honest, most of you guys aren't gonna really be running anything more than a Hyper 212 anyway, maybe an H100. So for the average user, probably the high fours, 4.6 to 4.8, somewhere in that range is likely. And at that range, the CPUs will probably perform equally. So for those of you out there that are sitting on a 7700K or even a 6700K, there's really no reason to consider this. In reality, and I said this in a video a little while ago, if you go ahead and check that out, um, pretty much any eight thread Sandy Bridge or newer CPU will be just fine. And this includes the Ryzen 5 CPU. So like a Ryzen 5 1400, if gaming is the primary focus of your system, this will work just fine until new game engines and new game consoles, usually consoles need to come out before engines get revised. But until that happens, there's really not gonna be any real need to go any higher than that for gaming. So for productivity, yes, obviously more cores, more threads. The more you can get, the better you're off you are. And obviously the more you buy now, the more future-proof you're going to be because that's where things are going. We're not gonna see six, 10, 12 gigahertz. That's not going to happen. We will see, you know, 12, 24, and possibly even higher core count before we see 10 gigahertz CPUs. So you do have to go ahead and take that into consideration. That is where things are headed. But if you're sitting on a good, solid four core, eight thread CPU, yes, you're missing out on a little bit of performance. So don't run a GTX 1060 at 720p. That, that's going to be my solution on that one. If you have a GTX 1080 or 1080 Ti or a Vega 64 or a Vega 56 or whatever, just don't run them at 1080p. Go get yourself a better monitor. Actually take advantage of the GPU for what it's meant to do, which is run higher resolutions and higher graphical detail. So don't be going, oh man, I'm running 1080p high on my GTX 1080 Ti and my CPU is a bottleneck. Yeah, it's going to be. 1080p for that level of GPU is just not where that's supposed to be. You shouldn't be running at that resolution. And for anybody freaking out about CSGO, unless you're a professional player that gets paid to do it, who really cares if you're running 500 frames per second? I found this really interesting. I've wanted to do this video for a while now. I wanted to see where the diminishing returns were on cores and threads. Looks like six cores, six threads is pretty much the maximum that's really going to be necessary for a while. Now, the extra six threads on the Ryzen 5 1600 or 1600X versus the i5 8600K, that will become important if you are doing productivity workloads, that will be helpful. But the higher clock speeds of the 8600K will probably help offset. So in all honesty, it's really gonna come down to price because at the end of the day, I'm gonna see these two as pretty much equivalent because like I said, you should not be running such high end GPUs at such low resolution. You can do whatever you want, it's up to you, but that's really just not what they're designed for. Well, alrighty guys, if you like this kind of video, please hit that like button, please subscribe, please share with friends, that really helps me out. And go ahead and check us out on Patreon if you wanna help me get more hardware on hand so this way we can do more videos like this for you guys. And I'll catch you guys 
in the next video.